Uh, it's been a very uh, difficult day to be a Buckeye fan hearing the loss of your top tailback and perhaps your best defensive player uh, has been arrested. Uh, let's bring on Tim May from the Columbus Dispatch. He's been all over the story today. And, Tim, obviously we read your story and your sources are telling you that Hyde's been dismissed. I guess I'll start there. What is your definition, do you believe, of dismissed? Is that permanently gone, or are you still waiting to hear from a statement from Ohio State before you can calculate that opinion? Uh, basically, I'm still waiting to hear for us from a statement from Ohio State. The way the way it was addressed to me by a couple of extremely good sources is that uh, you know Urban Meyer, as you as you well know, Urban Meyer, uh, one of his grand one of his grand uh, uh, one of his one of his one of his grand rules is you don't disrespect women, and uh, and I understand he's very upset about this. Uh, you know we'll see what he says publicly, either today, tomorrow, or, or Wednesday. But uh, this is something you just don't do, no matter what, no matter what the situation is. He preaches to these guys all the time. You know, walk away. You know, if, if somebody does something. And even in your apartment, and it's female, you walk away. You leave your apartment, you know, and uh, that's what got Storm Klein in trouble last year. And uh, and we'll see where this goes with Carlos Hyde. But uh, uh, he is not he's not happy at all. I'm uh, with Carlos Hyde. That you can you don't even have to talk to him to take that to the bank. Tim, but uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what the uh, statement. If there is a definitive statement that comes out today, we'll see what it says. Uh, last year. In essence, uh, Newhart and and uh, Stoneburner lost their scholarships uh, and were not allowed to work out with the team in the summer because of what we all know they did outdoors. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I said, we'll see where it goes. The Roby thing is very interesting because the Roby situation was in another state and he was visiting a friend of his who's on the University of uh, Indiana football team and, and was in a bar, the way I understand it, and uh, – some things were said, and uh, he, in essence, I guess, was asked to leave, and then he tried to return because he wanted to be with his friends, and vouchers got involved, and uh, uh, according to them, allegedly, he, uh, he, he punched a bouncer and uh, ended up in jail, and we'll see where that goes, but it, um, I hate to, I hate to, like, uh, equivocate here, but punching a bouncer in uh and Urban Meyer's book is not akin to a shoving or whatever a uh, a female. Yeah, no question. I, I I believe your opinion there, and I think it's accurate. Uh, let me ask you this: If Urban Meyer, and I believe that the perception now that that he has a chance to be as hard on the crime as he wants, and dismissing a guy right away with him not being officially charged by police or being arrested, just being a person of interest, what does that tell you about this situation? Does it tell you that? The punch, the alleged punch by Carlos Hyde would have to be have to be absolutely fictitious for him to have a chance to come back. Or do you believe there is a situation in your mind with dealing, you know, and talking with Urban Meyer and getting getting feelings on these things that if the result was the same but not intended, or there are circumstances that that would he listen to Carlos Hyde? Would there be a chance if this gets uh, if the legal situation plays out and it's not the exact charge that it could be? Uh, do you think he has any chance? What percentage of chance would you have on Carlos Hyde returning to this team? You're talking about wiggle room? Is that what you're is that's that what you're where I'm he- That's kind of where I'm heading with the perception that Urban Meyer has now, how he wants to treat things. Is that real, that that, that, that perception would weigh on him, that I'm not giving a, even if the result was not intended, that it's unbecoming of a football player that he wants on his team? You know, I don't like to deal in hypotheticals. Mm-hmm. But, uh, um your, your man Bo knows that also, but I will say this: uh, with Storm Klein, uh, Storm Klein was charged, and uh, it was ba- based on a complaint by his uh, by his former girlfriend or girlfriend, and uh, and the uh, event happened in his apartment. And uh, as things worked out, it was basically learned that Storm Klein, in essence, removed her from his apartment, uh, whether it was forcefully or not. You know, remains. To be, uh, you know, only they know, but uh, that's what changed things in a lot of respects. There, I mean, the the charge got got changed. Uh, <clears throat> this supposedly happened in public. Again, everything is alleged at this point, but I would think Ohio State has done its homework on this situation, and uh, so 
and it happened in public, if you know what I'm saying, uh, other people evidently witnessed this. This was a fairly popular spot where this occurred. So I, I'm not sure how much wiggle room there is in this whole thing, uh, to be honest with you. We're chatting with Tim May from the Columbus Dispatch here on Bishop and Rothman. And Tim, in your mind, is Rod Smith definitely the starter? Now let's say Carlos Hyde is done for good. Is Rod Smith definitely the starter? And, and who would you else? who else would you put up there as maybe a top candidate to be the starter? Well, you know, Rod Smith, Bids, you watched uh, spring as much as I did, and uh, Rod Smith, uh, I thought Rod Smith was having a tremendous spring, and he kind of came out at the end of the year last year. You know, the big question, the big question with him always has been, will he consistently hang on to the football? And uh, uh, that's still going to be a question until he proves it. You know, I mean, he kind of did that. Remember, we were watching in spring one time, and he came out and and made a big run, and uh, this was about tackling and stuff and he sort of like flipped the ball at the end of it and Drayton yeah. was all over him Stan Drayton the running backs coach hey hang you should hang on to the ball as long as it's in your hands <laughs> and uh so uh we'll see but I mean there is no doubt that he has the potential to be the power runner uh maybe even extraordinaire that they want need uh with that said Briante Dunn they're Briante Dunn excuse me Brian, they done. They're really high on him. I thought Warren Ball had a better spring than even the coaches said he did. And of course, you've got uh, Ezekiel Elliott coming in from from the uh, from the freshman team. They're, they're really high on him. And then Dontre Wilson is a guy that uh, you know they really like. He's coming in could be that H back guy. And and don't forget you have Jordan Hall, who was the starting uh, tailback uh, two years ago at times. So I think they feel like. They've got people, but we all know Carlos Hyde came with, within 30 yards, or 1,000 yards last year, and he didn't do it with hocus pocus. I mean, uh, uh, he he was a really good football player last year, and they expected him to be even better this year. So, if, if in fact he's not around, it's going to be a big loss. Hey Tim, really quick on Brad Roby, uh, I've said I think it's probably going to be a one game suspension. Max, give us your prediction. Do you think it'll be a one game suspension? Also. He's scheduled to go to Chicago. Do you think they're only going to take two now, or do you think they'll still take Roby? Will they replace him with somebody else? What do you think is going to happen with Roby as far as going to Chicago as far as whether or not he'll be suspended? Well, I'm just going to go on a limb. I would be very surprised if he's in Chicago, but stranger things have happened. But I'd be very, very surprised. Uh, and uh, and then number two, I don't even want to speculate on his, on his situation because uh, – I don't even think they know all the facts. They've got it all together yet on what, ex what exactly they're looking at there. But I think he's looking at at least a one-game suspension without a doubt. Tim, uh, quickly want to throw another one at you. If if this happened over the weekend, with obviously your sources are telling you that it did and that he's been dismissed off the team, why is it, it happened publicly, allegedly, why has there been no charge or arrest? What, what could possibly be holding that up? I don't know. I think this is a – this is a uh, – uh, I have no idea. I mean, I don't speak for the police. Believe me, I don't do that. But uh, <laughs> I think they were looking. I think they wanted to get more information before they uh, before they decide to move on it one way or the other. And uh, and I don't just like I don't know what Carlos Hyde might have said to uh, uh, Urban Meyer and uh, Gene Smith. You know, uh, but but you know the what we know what we know is he is a person of interest for sure in a situation where a female. Um, was physically, you know, uh, you know, I don't mean to say if it was punched, but physically something happened there that uh, has caused the police to look at it. So that's where you stand, and that's never a good thing. Tim, really appreciate you keeping us up to date. Thanks for jumping on with us today. I know you're busy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, see you guys. Okay, thanks. That's thanks, Tim, Tim May from the Columbus.